What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel, Richard on Data. If you're new here, my name is Richard and this is the channel where we talk about data, data science, statistics, and programming. Subscribe for more content just like this and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. We're going to talk about one of the most important concepts in the statistical modeling and machine learning world, and that's the distinction between inference and prediction. It's happened to me tons of times before that people will tell me they have a project and they want to incorporate machine learning into it, or they maybe just have some kind of model they want to build, and the purpose for that model isn't immediately clear within the first five seconds. So this is always one of the absolute first questions I have. Is the objective inferring or explaining some kind of effect, or is it predicting future outcomes? Now these two terms do come up in the confidence interval and hypothesis testing frameworks, but we're going to focus strictly on modeling here. So I'm going to talk about what each of these two terms actually mean, what models are typically used for each objective, what the trade-offs are between them, and what some general best practices usually are for them. Let's actually start with prediction, because this one is probably more common in the modeling world, and it's a little bit simpler. So our goal here is quite simply just to predict future values of some outcome, that is, of some dependent variable. Just as an example, let's take the real estate world. So suppose you're tasked with building a model or an algorithm that predicts what homes on the market are actually worth. And in fact, Zillow just recently had a competition for people to do exactly this. So you come up with some information, things like number of bedrooms, number of bathrooms, amount of crime in the neighborhood, distance from a body of water, amount of square footage, stuff like that. So you end up building a model and you train it based on historical data where you have all that information just based on houses that have sold in the past. Next, your measure of success is how close your predictions get to the real home sale values. Now this is an instance of prediction, and this is where things like advanced machine learning techniques, deep learning, stuff like that really shines. Next, let's talk about inference. Now this one is a little bit more complex and convoluted to understand. Basically with inference, you're trying to infer or explain or understand how the data exactly affects the response. Let's go back to our real estate example. So suppose here, predicting future home prices is not your goal, or at least it's not your primary goal. Instead, you just want a solid model that you can trust that estimates how much the home will go up in value if you do things like adding a bathroom or crime goes down, just stuff like that. Think about something like a linear regression model and you have your slope coefficients and let's suppose you fit a real estate model and it tells you that for every bedroom you add holding all things constant the value of your house will go up by thirty thousand dollars so having that model be reliable you trust that slope coefficient and its variance is as low as possible all that is key and plus, let's face it, if I had a model like that and I trusted it, that means it's time for me to go on Yelp and find some contractors to work on my house. Here's the thing though, it is counterintuitive at first, but there's almost always a trade-off between these two. So the most predictive models are generally not going to be the ones that make the most informed and best use of things like associations and relationships between your variables. That is, the predictive models are not the most inferential models. And similarly, the most inferential models, which do the best job at explaining variance and how the response varies with your covariates, are not the highest predictive power models. Let's say you're making a linear regression. Now that's perfectly interpretable. It's probably not the thing you could do with the highest predictive capability, but from my experience anyway, linear regressions are things which most clients can wrap their heads around and at least understand on a basic level, just because linearity is so beautifully simple. So in this case, a linear regression model, not the best predictive power, but the inferential capability is fantastic. But then suppose you want to make this particular model more predictive, so you end up introducing regularization. So depending on if you're doing ridge regression or lasso or elastic net, you could end up reducing the values of the coefficients 
or just eliminating them from the model altogether. So what you're doing is you're introducing bias and you're harming the interpretability and the overall inferential capability of the model, but you're hopefully reducing variance and the overall error of the model, and with it, you are increasing your predictive power. So again, you have a trade-off. Less inferential ability, more predictive power. Next, you could try machine learning methods like k-nearest neighbors, decision trees, or random forests, these things tend to do pretty well from a predictive standpoint, but all of a sudden you've totally lost your interpretability. It's not impossible to explain these things, but it's way, way more difficult than it is to explain a linear model, and these are not something that you're going to break down to clients using clean, simple mathematical equations. Then lastly, you have neural networks. And when you have a lot of data, these are basically the gold standard as far as predictive power is concerned, but people do call these black boxes for a reason. You've lost all explainability by the time you get to neural networks. Now the question is, what does doing these things actually look like in practice? So I've had my fair share of dealing with both of these types of problems, probably about equally so, although prediction is probably more common in the field as a whole. And I will say, inference is almost always the more difficult of the two problems. It's not something that, at least in 2020 anyway, we're just going to be able to automate away using Carrot or Scikit-Learn. Inference requires far more domain knowledge. You'll typically adjust for confounding variables and associations between your variables, because fundamentally, Inference is a question about causality. Suppose you've got some kind of regression model and then you want to do model selection. So you're probably going to lean in a lot more to your knowledge of the data and of the domain as a whole than you are into things like pseudo R squared or AIC. And this could mean you're keeping variables in your model because they're important to the client, they're important to the context of your problem, even if eliminating them could make it look like your model is going to do better. Also, as far as dimensionality is concerned, with inference, interpretability is everything. So you're going to have a natural bias towards simpler and more parsimonious models, and you're probably not going to want to load your model up with a whole bunch of different variables and features if you can absolutely help it. With prediction, on the other hand, there are tons of newer methodologies that absolutely thrive on having lots of data and lots of features. So in that case, dimensionality is a blessing and not a curse. Then also, as I talked about with the regularization example, with inference, you don't want bias introduced into the model at all. With prediction, though, you're probably willing to tolerate some amount of bias if it means that you're going to get substantially less variance and have less error and a better predictive model as a whole. Then suppose you want to validate the model. In the case of inference, things like goodness of fit tests are going to be more meaningful. But with prediction, you're going to want to optimize some metric like area under the receiving operating characteristic curve, area under the precision recall curve, root mean square error, whatever the case may be, optimizing that metric is your target. So summing it all up, these two approaches are very different. What you get out of them is different, the modeling and approach you take is different, but fundamentally the most important thing is Inference and prediction are answering two very different questions. So whenever you embark on a new modeling project, make sure you ask that fundamental question. Is this an inference problem or is it a prediction problem? So thanks for watching this video. If you found this helpful, smash the like button. Also leave a comment down below and tell me about what kinds of modeling projects you've done that fall under either the inference or the prediction umbrellas. So until next time, Richard, on data.